Scitari are the bionic heart of the Adeptus Mechanicus legions. Their hordes tirelessly guard the forge worlds of the Imperium, obliterate those who oppose the tech priests from the face of the galaxy, and fight in the vanguard of the quest for knowledge. As the technocracy of the Mechanicus cult pushes its boundaries toward the stars, these cybernetic warriors always march at the forefront. To fully understand the purpose of the Skitari, one must first learn about the Adeptus Mechanicus, their masters, the Tech Priests. Thousands of years ago, even before the birth of the Imperium, the Adeptus Mechanicus, then simply the Mechanicum, ruled Mars. As constructors and scientists, they were without equal, and their knowledge and understanding of the galaxy was phenomenal. Then came the Age of Strife. Millennia of continuous wars cost humanity dearly. What was created was destroyed, what was known forgotten, and humanity's understanding of the universe worsened. Besieged from all sides among the nightmares of the galaxy, the human race was on the brink of extinction. Such a devastating course could not be allowed to continue, and the Martians took it upon themselves to preserve the human species. Turning to their machine god, they realized that combined efforts were needed to reclaim the lost, to search for what had slipped into oblivion, and to study everything possible about the universe, applying this information to the cause. Bolstered by the appearance of the Emperor and the subsequent reunification with Terra, the Tech Priests of Mars set out to the stars with what little they had and began their quest for knowledge, for knowledge is power. Since then, the Adeptus Mechanicus also known as the Priesthood of Mars, has acted as the keepers of the Imperium's technology and formed the Galactic Brotherhood responsible for the creation of war machines and overseeing the sacred technical knowledge in all its diversity. Skitarii are the holy warriors of this organization, sworn to fight and die for their masters, the Tech Priests. Their limbs and organs have been replaced with bionics, so they can march across the radiation-drenched dunes of Mars and the battlefields of the entire galaxy. The Skitari are armed with the finest technologies of the Adeptus Mechanicus, bringing relics of the machine god into battle to unleash chaos upon the enemy. Transonic blades cut through armor as if it were not there and galvanic rifles incinerate the potential energy of the victim in one powerful electrical flash. In glory of the Omnissiah, the Skitarii wield a synergy of technology and ferocity. The legions of these cyber warriors are relentless. They indefatigably pursue new knowledge. Tirelessly marching across the expanse of the galaxy, they snatch secrets from the cooling hands of a defeated enemy. Equipped with the most advanced weapons of the Imperium, supported by war machines and under the influence of digital technologies that elevate their abilities to a superhuman level, the Skitari wage war with unending energy. Indeed, they can be defeated at a great cost, but they will surely return, for no one is allowed to oppose the will of the Omnisia. Those pursued by the Skitari will be trampled into the dust of history, even if it takes hundreds of years. The ranks of the Skitari are comprised of individuals with the most diverse of fates. Some of them are former convicts, others cloned merely to fight and perish in pursuit of knowledge. Among them are wild warriors and hive-gangers, enhanced and perfected, and there are ordinary laborers from hab-blocks, hard workers from factories. Some are simply people, in the wrong place at the wrong time, forcibly conscripted. An intense regimen of psychic processing brings obedience and loyalty. Then begins the serious cranial implantation, necessary to eliminate creativity and imagination, enhance logic and the ability to perform complex calculations quickly, as well as to ignite an unquenchable desire to serve the machine god. But these are only the first of many changes that make a Skitarius both more and less than a human. The teachings of the Adeptus Mechanicus assert that a man is worth as much as he knows, and that his body is merely a vessel for this knowledge. With such an approach, if parts of him prove weak and ineffective, they should be replaced with something more suitable for obtaining, assimilating and storing information, something mechanical. The first physical change is the amputation of the legs below the knee, regardless of whether this surgical intervention was necessary or not. 
Some claim that this is a tradition, almost a religious ritual, dating back to the first settlers of Mars, who supposedly rubbed their legs to the knees against the rocky dunes of the Red Planet. In reality, it is more of a necessity, as the forge worlds where the Skitari are based are so polluted with waste and saturated with radiation that contact with the ground is equivalent to a death sentence. Therefore, the Skitari march to war on titanium legs, which can easily be replaced if they wear out and quickly repaired if broken and a high rate of losses guarantees that there will be no shortage of spare parts. The next thing fighters undergo is the removal of their eyelids. As with many strange practices of the Adeptus Mechanicus, there is a reason for this. Scitarii are the eyes and ears of the Adeptus Mechanicus, which must always remain vigilant in case important information is discovered. And since any data is valuable to their tech priest masters, the eyes of the subordinates must be permanently open. Fortunately, blinking is a problem that is extremely easy to solve. Following the removal of their eyelids, they are gifted with optical augmentation filled with blessed balm that protects the eyes from the dust of battles and the constant dirt of waste from their homeworld. A Scitarius can undergo augmentation multiple times during his life. He is constantly improved as a result of injuries or as necessary. The greatest honour is to achieve the Crux Mechanicus, that is, the point when a Scitarius becomes more machine than man. This is a sure sign of the blessing of the Omniscia. Those who reach this state invariably become Alpha, and even Alpha Primus, leading whole maniples of Scitari into battle. Scitari are highly technologically advanced for human warriors, integrating numerous augmentations and advanced equipment with the unfathomable inventions of scarcely understood science. One might think from the description that they are exceedingly elite and elegant cyber warriors of the future, but their appearance wholly contradicts this. The Adeptus Mechanicus worship old technologies and ancient equipment. This is why their gear looks outdated, as if it comes from a grim past rather than a distant future. Pipes and wires snake out of leather-bound packs. Breathing masks resemble gas masks, portable measuring devices look unwieldy, and rifles have wooden stocks. Even their combat armour looks vintage, like a mix between ancient knightly armours and a copper diver's suit. All this serves to convey the inhumanity of the Skitari. This is why most of them wear helmets or hoods, and their eyes are covered with bulging goggles. One might surmise from their appearance that they are human, but in reality... They are not. Not anymore. This is echoed in their equipment. Everything about it is terrifying by nature. They are ready to kill with radiation, depleted uranium rounds, burning phosphorus, and lightning from arc rifles. These are dark and utterly mad technologies. Some even think it better to be killed by a bolt round. At least in that case, death would be quick. Tech priests very rarely accompany their cohorts to war. Instead, the masters of the Skitari remain on board explorator vessels, not only for safety reasons, but also to see the full picture of the battlefield through the senses of their soldiers and, accordingly, adjust their actions. As the new sphere swells with information coming from the battlefield, Lex Mechanics and Logisticians rationalize it and calculate new statistical outputs, probabilities and forecasts, which are then turned into tactical directives and maneuvers to be executed by the legions below. The Skitari feel such sudden reprogramming as if they were touched by the deity Omniscia itself, perceiving it as a sacred directive, reinforced by divine intervention. They will execute their task precisely as ordered, even if it leads to their own demise, reckless devotion perhaps, effective undoubtedly. Skitari are often sent to the most dangerous war zones in the galaxy, places where Astra Militarum soldiers would not survive, and the deployment of Adeptus Astartes would seem like a terrible and unnecessary waste. Though they do not have the same reliable armour as space marines, the Skitari are superbly equipped for any deadly situation. The Skitari's equipment consists of three parts, a bodysuit, metallic armour and sacred garments. The combat armour, traditionally made of titanium, contains the warrior's life support systems, Included are a respirator mask, stimulant injectors, and vital signs monitoring devices. Also present are targeting complexes, communication devices, and an info link connecting the Skitari to the Noosphere. Unique to the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Noosphere is a form of communication. 
Externally, it appears as a ghostly halo of data surrounding the cohorts of Skitari, and any individual cyber soldier can upload information from the battlefield into the new sphere via a data tether, where it is assimilated by the collective consciousness of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The sacred robes indicate that the Skitarii are the holy crusaders of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Additionally, the garments are peppered with lead spheres which protect the wearer from radiation and harmful energy. The last and most impressive element of the armour is the hermetic suit worn beneath the robe and armour. A Skitari warrior can remain in the ranks for many months if not years without respite, and during all this time he remains in armour, always ready for battle. The hermetic suit not only protects the Skitari's mortal flesh, from the corrosive environment into which he is deployed, but also operates to keep the body functioning at the peak of its efficiency during combat missions. Every gram of bodily waste is processed and fed back intravenously or transformed into a fatty lubricant, which is pumped throughout the suit to protect the cybernetic soldier's waxy skin. Faithful to the belief that older technology is superior in all aspects, Weapons for Skitari are often built based on ancient models and blueprints thousands of years old. These include galvanic rifles of the rangers, which fire bullets under the control of servitors and transuranic arquebus, capable of piercing a neat hole even in tank armor. For the annihilation of enemies, Skitari Vanguard utilize something even more fearsome, plasma, radium, and phosphor. Though incredibly powerful, such weapons eventually take the life of the owner through radiation exposure or as a result of a catastrophic meltdown. Armed, armoured and enhanced, Skitari are merely cogs in the finely oiled machine of the Adeptus Mechanicus. A resource that can be used and expended in the pursuit of knowledge. Utterly devoted to the search for knowledge and omniscia, they fight not for pride or honours, but for the future of humanity and bright enlightenment. At least that's what the tech priests indoctrinate them with. The masters themselves may aspire to something entirely different. But Skitari are not concerned with political, ethical or ecumenical questions. They simply live and die serving the machine god. The way members of the cult Mechanicus regard their soldiers can be understood through the example of the planet Metallica. The clergy of this forge world have always regarded their Skitari as cannon fodder and their blood as a currency to be spent in wars against numerous enemies. For instance, the deployment of the Armageddon military unit was, in the literal sense, a death sentence for its warriors, for they found themselves face to face with the mightiest of Korn's champions. And it's not that they supposedly had no chance of winning the war. On the contrary, the Imperium achieved its greatest victory on this cursed world, and the Skitarii played a most crucial role. However, the valiant warriors bore witness to such horrors that a total purge was required after the campaign. The survivors were slaughtered and dismantled. To those unversed in the mysteries and methods of the cult Mechanicus, such an outcome may seem cruel and soulless, but in reality such emotional concepts hold absolutely no significance for the logically thinking tech priests commanding such military units. Indeed, it has been noted many times that Adominus looks at the warriors running beside him on the battlefield with detachment, concerned only with how they will help him achieve the most effective result. After all, a Cataphron battle servitor is easily repaired or replaced, and there is no shortage of mortals wishing to join the ranks of the Skitarii. Thus, the alliance between the cult Mechanicus and the forces of the Skitarii converges on the Dominus who leads it. The tech priest oversees every aspect of the battle like a virtuoso conductor directing a symphony of carnage. With a gesture of his hand, Cataphrons roll forward with a clank, their weapons blazing. A short, indistinct command, and the Skitari vanguard releases precise volleys. The slightest wish, and thousands of the faithful perish in glory of the Omnissiah. Skitari are most often sent to war in combat maniples, military cohorts, and even entire legions on their own. Frequently, they have to fight shoulder to shoulder with other followers of the cult Mechanicus, the battle robots of Legio Cybernetica, the massive war machines of Centurio Ordinatus, and Machine God from the legions of Titans. It is also known that they have fought alongside the Astra Militarum 
Adeptus Sororitas, and Adeptus Astartes when their interests intersected. Their methods and motives within the Imperial forces are often considered dubious. However, no one can deny their efficacy and determination. In any case, such alliances are maintained precisely until the tech priests decide they have acquired what they came for and withdraw their forces. The mission of the Skitarii is to take enlightenment from the galaxy and impose order in its place. For despite all the lauded objectivity and logic of the cult Mechanicus, despite all cybernetic modifications, tech priests are still driven by human emotions and passions. And thus, the battle cohorts go to war to fulfill personal plans just as often as for the advancement of the Omniseer's cause. But the Skitarii themselves are unconcerned. They fear neither monster nor devil, for serving the will of the Omniscia as laid out by his holy prophets is already sufficient for them. Even in death, the Skitarii offer the sacrifice of sacred data to their unseen masters above. In exchange, they receive communion with the dogmas on every new day of war and are grateful for it. Each battle is a chance to feel the divine motive force enter you, taking over every synapse and engram, and submitting to the Supreme Consciousness. Those who have experienced the bliss of Omniscia's touch will fight like lions. Every shot and hit will be calibrated for maximum lethality. Though such individuals usually go to the Great Maker soon afterward, those that survive are treated as saints amongst their war cohorts. Even if, outside the battle zone, such God-chosen individuals suddenly activate the destruction protocol, they are soon forgiven, and no attention is paid to the number of casualties. The first cohorts, tasked with crossing the desolate expanses of Mars on foot, were armed only with galvanic rifles. They accompanied their masters in the transitions from north to south across the equatorial belt, teeming with cannibal servitors and the rogue machine intelligences. Over the centuries, these convoys evolved more and more until they turned into the combat maniples of the 41st millennium. Numerous variants lined up, from the maniples of the Legio Cybernetica Automatons to the fruitful Auxilia Ordinatus. However, the main combat formation remained the cohort. The Scitarii Legion of the Forge World is divided into macroclades, which in turn are broken down into cohorts and maniples. The overwhelming majority of Skitari combat cohorts are not delivered to battle in armoured vehicles or aircraft, but simply march to the front on foot without respite, even if it means starting their journey several months earlier than their allies. They wade through poisonous marshes and lakes to arrive at the front line on time. Rank upon rank of Skitari march together with chains of Onaga dune crawlers, mimicking the nomadic caravan sarays of Mars. Their firm step reflects the fortitude of souls loyal to duty. It is said that Skitari would rather drive themselves to death than disobey direct imperatives. The nomenclature below is used by Mars and most of its brother Forge worlds. Some instead name their armies Skitari Division and combine cohorts into regiments. Macroclade, the largest structural subdivision in the Skitari army. The garrison of the Legion of Titans traditionally consists of Macroclade I of the Forge world. It is commonly known as Macroclade Prima, Macroclade Primus, etc. Each Macroclade consists of four cohorts with three maniples each, totaling twelve maniples. For twelve is the sacred number of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Each military cohort is denoted by a number on the hulls of their Onager dune crawlers. A typical Skitarii maniple consists of several types of forces, however. Special cohorts, maniples and clades may be formed if necessary. Sabotage clades, armoured cohorts, assault maniples, anti-aircraft cohorts, anti-tank cohorts, and so forth. Heretics! hissed the princeps of desert hunters for the hundredth time today. He jabbed his metallic finger towards the orcs, surging through the arches. No matter their number, we shall prevail. Gears and fangs into the blood. Into the blood, his brothers-in-arms, the Sicarians, responded dully. They were but a pitiful handful truly content only when slaying the enemies of Omniscia. Fortunately, Riser had more than enough of this fortune to go around. The ground trembled, and the Sicarians scattered in all directions, like water striders over the surface of a pond. The rumble grew into a deafening roar as the Princeps raised his head and saw 6,834 Greenskins warriors pour into him. 
Praise be! shouted the Princeps, leaping onto the shoulder of a fallen statue. He soared into the air. The dull light of Reza's sun glinted off his fully armed figure and plunged the transonic blades into the armoured bodies of orcs at the forefront of the green wave. Behind him, his deadly cohort followed suit. Heads rolled, orcish limbs flew off, drawing blood arcs. Truly, thought Princeps, today is a splendid day to be an instrument of Omnissia's will. Skitari Vanguard brings the destructively divine touch of the tech priests to the farthest corners of the galaxy. The Vanguard fights under the most adverse conditions, for throughout the many civil wars the cult Mechanicus has waged, the Vanguard learned not only to endure lethal radiation, but also to wield it as a weapon. The combat gear of the Skitari Vanguard emits such strong radiation that simply standing next to it makes one feel weakened, for non-Skitari sharing a barracks with the Rad Infantry is a death sentence. Theoretically, the Vanguard's battle armor should protect the soldiers themselves, yet occasionally when a warrior removes his helmet, the fallen teeth with hair and ulcer-covered skin reveal a grim truth. Let the Vanguard's own Rad rifles slowly kill their owners. Their effect on those hit by their bullets is a hundred times stronger. Not only does the target get struck by the super-radiating charges, but the secondary effect of the radiation salvo amplifies the impact to such a degree that not even a Tyranid would survive. This is why the Skitari Vanguard are sent to the most hostile regions of combat operations the galaxy can offer. The Vanguard will stoically, in solemn silence, fulfill their duty, fighting to the last in the name of their merciless god. The cybernetic warriors who command the Skitari cohorts have long ago passed the Crux Mechanicus. Some have nothing left but a living head stitched to a mechanical body. But from the simplest Alpha to the most praised Sicarian Princeps, all are worthy warriors. In battle, the leaders of the Skitari don't stand out in size yet possess inhuman strength and endurance. Those who have passed through the vanguard are so heavily irradiated that the earth dies beneath their feet, and only regular visits to the radiation cleansing chambers keep them from slowly turning into a repulsive black mush. Those who rose from the ranks of the Skitari rangers sipped the omniscience of their masters, accompanied by paranoia that comes with it. Those hailing from night worlds, usually this refers to young nobles who have not undergone the initiation ritual, are physically indomitable, yet their minds are implanted with emotive switches and memory probes to keep their fierceness in check. However, despite their flaws, all Skitari commanders are capable of digesting a daunting volume of tactical information. Each becomes obsessively familiar with the combat capabilities of their cohort and the abilities of the enemy. These profound, albeit narrow, knowledge bases render the leaders truly formidable adversaries, as they often win battles before the first shot is even fired. Skitari rangers are relentless hunters and tireless killers, boasting both terrifying accuracy and ruthless persistence. They can tirelessly track their prey for months before delivering a deadly volley from their galvanic rifles. Like all Skitari, the bodies of rangers are blessed with the gifts of the Omniscia to wage war on the side of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Complex respiratory masks filter out toxins and radiation. The fragile human legs, ill-suited for the harsh radiation dunes of Mars, are severed at the knee and replaced with advanced bionics, and eyelids, invisible under glowing goggles, are removed to keep the ranger ever vigilant. In the hungry times of humanity's ape-like ancestors, hunters killed prey larger than themselves by wearing it down to exhaustion. Following this principle, Skitari rangers scour the limits of the galaxy. Given a target, they will pursue it slowly but remorselessly. Initially, their victims from pirate bands to Xenos warriors escape through the web of Skitari fire with relative ease. If they manage to get far enough away, months, even years might pass, Enough time for the horror of the first encounter to almost be forgotten. Meanwhile, Skitari rangers will silently march step by step through trenches and ruins, tightening the noose with each passing night. At the very moment when the prey thinks it is no longer threatened, a constellation of ghostly blue lights will appear on the horizon. Barely perceptible, they will draw closer and closer. And then the darkness will burst into blinding fire. 
The Skitari, for whom war never ends, will advance again and again until the job is done. Once the hunters were Skitari infantry whose bodies were irreparably destroyed in the crucible of war. Mangled and barely alive, they were laid upon augmentation tables, after which the tech priests disassembled them, enhanced and transformed them into impassive killing machines, perfectly suited for warfare. Initially, they were conceived as cyber assassins for tracking down feral servitors and other undesirables banished from the cult Mechanicus in the wastelands of the Red Planet, but they proved so effective that their roles were reoriented for military service, consolidating them into groups known as Killclades. From that day on, they fought on the front lines of the many wars of the cult Mechanicus. The weaponry of the Sicarian hunters is a sinister example of the Adeptus Mechanicus's perfect command over the laws of physics. It emits a powerful, unpleasant drone that penetrates to the marrow. When these fearsome devices are activated, their sound field shifts frequencies until it achieves molecular resonance, allowing the blade to pass through enemy armor. The bloody outcome, although taking a second or two to manifest, is considered by the tech priests to be worth the time spent. This product of acoustic technology is so deadly that tech priests have refined it, obtaining several variants, from quick stiletto-like razors to terrifying caudal claws, gloves with sharp needle-like blades with which human flesh can be turned into quivering mush. The tech priests of Adeptus Mechanicus hold ancient technology such as the Legio Cybernetica robots in high esteem, which can't be said for the Skitari legions whose production is streamlined. Skitari are useful and effective en masse, but they are absolutely not valued as individuals, even by those priests who repair them, often using any spare parts at hand. Nonetheless, this did not prevent several clades from becoming famous, and if their deeds and heroism went unnoticed by their masters, the enemies certainly remembered them. During the invasion of Riza, the orcs from Wa, Ragutz learned to fear one particular squad of rust stalkers more than any other. Clade R2111 attacked during the season of acid rains, using the floods for cover for their infiltration. They have developed distinctive dripping rust patterns that the Greenskins have come to fear, dubbing them Rust Rippers. Several caches from Stygis 8 have earned similar infamy among their enemies, including those known as the Crimson Blades and the Skull Marks. These units appear to have gone rogue, often employing unusual insignias, and engaging in insubordination amidst other legions sent to war. However, since their actions benefited their home forge world, no one particularly endeavoured to track them down and reprogram them. Tall and slender Sicarian infiltrators make their way across the battlefield with the unnatural grace of herons, yet they were not always so, as every Sicarian is far from intact, neither in spirit nor body. Previously, Sicarian infiltrators were Skitari warriors who exhibited a certain propensity to instill fear and operated with admirable autonomy. Their war-torn bodies were taken by the tech priests and enhanced using the most frightening technologies known to mankind. Scouts still wear hermetic suits over the remnants of their fleshly bodies to which bionic limbs are grafted. But what stands out most are their combat dome helmets, making the Sicarian infiltrators perhaps the most terrifying military branch of the Skitari. An infiltrator easily bypasses enemy defences, but this ability is not related to stealth or skill. It depends only on the power and diversity of destructive frequencies broadcast from their dome-shaped helmet and protruding antennas. When Sicarian infiltrators approach, every sensorial apparatus of the enemy is subjected to an overpowering bombardment by external irritants. Voxcasters emit agonizing howls, video screens go insane from hissing interference. But even more, this paralyzing attack is effective against the senses of living beings. A terrible ringing fills the ears, eyes tear up and redden, the mouth fills with the taste of burnt metal. The only thing the victim remains capable of is breathing, and when they clamp their bleeding ears and squint their blood-filled eyes, the Sicarians just need to approach and shoot them at point-blank range. This sensory attack, although it has a wide range, is precisely calibrated by the tech priest, who approves the use of these horrific killings. 
Those Skitari who are sent to fight alongside Sicarian infiltrators receive null codes that turn these frequencies into a harmless song. For them, the continuous bombardment of neurodisruptions emanating from every dome-shaped helmet is perceived merely as a quiet psalm in glory of the Omniscia. And thus, the Skitari I regard Sicarian infiltrators as saviors from data corruption, as wise and holy heroes who selflessly fight on the front line. Only the enemy reveals the true truth. In these ruthless soldiers, almost no virtue remains, and the vestige of personality still preserved is only interested in death. Iron Strider Ballistari, a novelty that could only arise in the forge worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus. This bipedal combat platform combines astonishing technology with a brutal disregard for the lives of its crew. The Iron Stride moves swiftly and evenly across almost any terrain. The machine's elegant steps mirror the brief movements of the servitor placed beneath the rider's saddle. As this mechanical steed gallops along the flanks of the Skitari I Legion, the chosen marksman from the scout units provides cover for comrades with precise fire from heavy weapons. The distinct silhouettes of the Iron Strider Ballistari instill fear alike in the hearts of Xenos, renegades and Imperial commanders. Unerringly accurate, the Ballistarius have at their disposal knowledge of the anatomy, defensive capabilities, and vulnerabilities of every race encountered by the Adeptus Mechanicus. Tirelessly crossing the galaxy in search of significant targets along with their escort of scouts, the Ballistarius march in a rust-red mist, their ocular lenses gleaming. If an enemy is caught in the azure beam of their omnispecs, their heart beats but once more. For a sniper Ballisterius, making a deadly shot is as easy and simple as taking a breath. When a squadron of Iron Strider Ballistarii approaches a combat zone, the entire knowledge of the Adeptus Mechanicus about the enemy's leaders is transmitted to their database from above. Target reticules flicker and data geists glow, each searching for a thousand different iterations of the enemy commander form silhouette. When a positive ident is achieved, that Ballistarius will be rewarded with the chime of a brass bell and an intravenous dump of hyperfocus stimulants. The information is immediately transmitted to the Hunter Squadron and the Iron Striders, previously thundering steps across the battlefield, slow their pace. A similar attempt would cause a mechanical mount of the Sidonian Dragoon to tumble, but gyroscopic stabilizers fitted on each machine of the Ballistari balance it. Outwardly, it appears as if time around the squadron has slowed, the steed shift faintly in place or creep with sinister smoothness, and from such a mobile yet stable platform, the marksman takes the shot. With the firepower of heavy cognis weaponry at hand, and data on the enemy's vulnerable points displayed on the scope, the Ballistarius can penetrate the hull of an enemy tank and still hit its commander right in the eye. In truth, targeting important enemy war machines is a secondary task, Primarily, the Ballistari hunt enemy commanders, heretic priests, and Xenos warlords. Eliminating a leader can disrupt the battle formation of an entire army. Although not a single Ballistari would think to boast of such abilities, the Techno Priest Masters do everything to ensure the entire Imperium is well aware of the Ballistari's deadly accuracy. Like their colleagues, the Ballistari, the Sidonian Dragoons ride atop mechanical walking machines capable of tirelessly trudging through the most hostile terrain for years on end. Among all the inventions of the Adeptus Mechanicus, these iron steeds could be considered the closest to what is understood as a perpetual motion machine. The secret of their creation has long been lost, and therefore they must constantly move, for if they stop they will never go again. For this reason, they are used as assault units, Pilots leap into battle on them, trampling foes with titanic hooves. The Sidonian Dragoons stride across the battlefield like living pagan idols emerging from clouds of sacred incense to plunge their crackling taser lances into scattering enemies. Behind them, the Sidonian Dragoons leave a ragged trail of corpses stretching to the horizon. Astride a marvel of science, an iron strider, the Sidonian Dragoons are beset by neither doubts nor thoughts of rest. Their destiny is the power of incessant movement, harnessed for death. The first inhabitants of Sidonia, who populated this extensive crater-covered region of Mars, were surrounded by dense acidic fog. 
In the times of schisms that plagued Mars's past, those endowed with stilt augmetics could walk in this fog and survive. Their elevated position allowed them to avoid the most destructive effects of the acidic dust while remaining invisible to the enemy. The tactics of the Sidonian Dragoons echo those of these warrior explorers. Using nozzles that emit clouds of incense smoke, they march through ochre clouds, reminiscent of ancient Sidonia, confusing numerous enemies and affording the Dragoons time for a deadly attack. Each Iron Strider has a two-member crew, a single-task servitor, forever connected to the machine's gyro-stabilized body, and a Sidonian Dragoon who leads it into battle. The servitor is rigidly embedded into the machine's body. The stumps of legs are attached to the drive system. Arms and eyes are permanently connected to the steering matrix. More often than not, it is the single-task servitor upon which the control of the mechanical stilts rests that fails first. When its tormented body finally expires, the machine continues moving in the last set direction. Only a tech priest on Gravebeer can correct this, who will remove the dead flesh and insert a replacement while the machine continues on. Afterward, the walker is returned to service as if nothing happened, and the remains of its former inhabitant are unceremoniously discarded by the roadside. The servitor that drives the iron steed towards the enemy is nearly brainless, but its rider is a seasoned and proven Skitari warrior. Once the dragoon spots its prey, it marks it with a bullet from a phosphor serpenta or a radium jedzil. The glow of a bullet guides a squad even in the fog of war. Within mere seconds, a herd of mechanical steeds with legs as hard as Titan crushes the enemy and beats them to death with powerful taser weapons. The diverse armament of the Onager dune crawlers can shred squadrons of aircraft, penetrate the traitor's combat machinery, and scatter enemy commanders with beams of dazzling blue light. In addition to attacking the enemy with heavy weaponry, one of the main functions of the Onager dune crawler is to support the Skitari maniples in battle, where it serves as a walking port for the transmission of information gathered on the battlefield. For this purpose, the Onager is equipped with a broadband info spline, which enhances communication between warriors and their overseers and inspires the Skitarii to fight to the last in service to the machine god. Like all machines created by the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Onager bears the symbol of the machine cult's cogwheel. The sight of the familiar twelve-toothed wheel elevates the morale and ignites religious fervor among the vanguard and rangers. When the crawlers stalk with a spider-like gait, their protruding rig makes them resemble a predatory insect with a powerful sting. For their size, these walkers possess a fearsome firepower, such that ignorant soldiers of the Astra Militarum often liken them to walking cannons. For the Skitari, a dune crawler is not just a weapon, but a true reliquary protected by the machine god. For the tech priests, it is little more than a tool of destruction, albeit one tempered in the fire of history. This machine is designed not only to survive, but also to operate successfully in the harsh natural conditions of Mars and other Adeptus Mechanicus holdings. Tracks, which could get stuck and clogged in the toxic sands, are replaced with four limbs, and the body is raised higher so the crew can see over the cloud of acidic smog that inevitably covers the forge worlds. Onager dune crawlers are artifacts of a previous technological era, they were designed in the days when tech priests still crossed the rusty dunes between the great manufactoria of Mars. In caravans that marched relentlessly, step by step, they travelled through the red deserts of Mars. The armoured bodies of the Onagers protected the Martian tech priests from radioactive mutants and rogue servitors. The Onager dune crawlers owe their origin to the Mars Universal Land Engine 1000 U50. E. Constructed by the techno-archaeologist Arkan Land, the initial 1000, U-50. E. Was inspired by a type of ill-tempered insect-like beast of burden, which, in its creator's opinion, walked on holy terror in times immemorial. Conceived as a workhorse that could accompany its masters through the red deserts of Mars in relative safety, the machine was so successful that it was soon transformed into a weapon of war. It was given a new name, equipped with an emanatus force field produced in millions and sent to the front lines. So, millennia later, 
Onagers continue to serve the Adeptus Mechanicus as military machines rather than as beasts of burden. In the unimaginable arsenals of the Cult Mechanicus, four of the most destructive weapons have been allocated for them. The Icarus Array, Eradication Beamer, Neutron Laser, and Twin-Linked Heavy Phosphor Blaster. These allow the Onager to perform the role required on the battlefield, whether it be the destruction of enemy aircraft or precision firing at enemy tanks with the neutron laser. All weapons are installed in a side sponson with vertical lift. To aim the guns at a target in the horizontal plane, the body itself, which is attached to the chassis with four-legged joints, is rotated. The weapons are directly connected to extensive databases, which will record the crawler's successes until they're brimming with data, like a tick swollen with blood. This allows it to send these data directly to its masters and, in turn, relay their orders to the Skitarii. The Dune Crawler is manned by a team of two, bonded in a symbiotic relationship with their Onager master. Both crew members are located in a sealed cabin, constructed with the usual disdain for comfort. The gunner operator position is occupied by a Skitari Ranger who has at his disposal a whole set of auto sight lenses for achieving high firing accuracy. The Ranger is sheltered in an armoured compartment separate from the tank with amniotic fluid in which the driver, a Skitari Vanguard, whose resistance to lethal radiation allows him to immerse himself and directly connect with the Onager's machine spirit. To revive the Onager, all that is needed is to throw another Skitarius Vanguard into the mixture filled with electrodes. Nevertheless, the crew silently submits to their fate, for to serve the machine god is a reward in itself. The hatch on the roof from which the ranger can operate the Cognis heavy stubber is hermetically sealed against the elements. There, too, is a communication suite, which can be equipped with a smoke launcher, radar dish, or mind-scanning probe. At the front of the dune crawler, a Cognis manipulator is installed, a versatile tool that allows the Onager to perform limited field repairs on itself or kill nearby enemies with servo claws and drills. The dune crawler can be equipped with anti-sand skids, allowing it to navigate through treacherous terrain. A thermonuclear reactor at the stern serves as an impressive source of energy, capable of surviving even an attack from an Adeptus Astartes tank, which is of immense importance considering the incredible amount of energy consumed by the main weapon and the Emanatus force field. Thanks to their reliability, dune crawler squadrons are a common sight in the Legionis Scitari. Moving with hydraulic legs, they drive the enemies of the Omnissiah before them, tirelessly and remorselessly walking through the ruins of worlds ravaged by war. Dune crawlers usually provide support within the general Skitari maniples. However, many forge worlds deploy vast phalanxes of these walkers to bring maximum firepower down upon their enemies. Receiving a promotion from the Skitari maniples to the Cerberus Corps is a great honor. The Cerberus ride on swift quadrupedal constructs whose limbs, sharp as razors, allow them to easily manoeuvre across the most broken terrains while their riders are magnetically locked in gyro-stabilised positions. Cerberus cavalry are scouts and sentinels. They excel at flanking the enemy and striking at unprotected targets. Advanced objectives implanted in the riders' heads are now spherically connected with their mount sensors, further enhancing the warrior's targeting accuracy and strike force, while expertly calibrated olfactory sensors and sensitive augury equipment turn the Cerberus into relentless and formidable hunters. Dazzling flashes of chemical fire and the crackle of charred flesh perpetually envelop one of the most aggressive Skitarii clades, the Cerberus sulphur hounds, Recruited from the most warlike of the Skitari warrior clades, they menacingly patrol the boundaries of their Forge World's temples. On the battlefield, they play the role of attacking forces. When their tech priest masters unleash the Sulphur Hounds, they break through the enemy's defences, penetrate their ranks, and then turn back to finish off the survivors. Most Forge Worlds exist as poisoned wastelands, the result of millennia of industrial overproduction. The Scorpius was designed to overcome the acidic marshes of these planets. Beneath its pneumatic skirt of reinforced nanofiber, half-forgotten processes optimize alchemical gas, creating propulsion, 
and emitting a column of smoke and fumes in the process. Bristling with heavy armaments, Scorpius disintegrators are fast-moving battle tanks. They sweep forward in unstoppable waves of armor, supporting infantry advances with rapid-fire volleys intended to disable enemy war machines and sweep aside hordes of weaker foes. The machine delivers devastating missile salvos fired in preset cascades. The heavy clang of reloading is heard even before the first missiles explode. This tank's main armament can vary. Some shoot from their Bellarose energy cannons. The arc trajectory projectiles use the same hyperactive gas as the hover engine, only superheated and reinfused. Upon impact, the projectiles explode in a scorching spectroscopic flash. Other tanks are armed with a ferrumite cannon. Upon contact with the target, its shots turn into a molten spear, causing instant heating of the armor. More radical tech priests, risking the wrath of the machine god, use the reliable Scorpius as transport to move forces over great distances. However, more often these columns of machines follow the cohorts of foot Scitarii. The Scorpius armored vehicles are reconfigured for rapid delivery of frontline forces into the thick of battle. Amidst clouds of dust and whirls of chemical smoke, they move towards the enemy's defensive line or designated fire points. The armored ramps loudly fall away, and down them descend the cybernetic warriors of the machine god, while the Scorpius itself showers the enemy with fire from its heavy caliber Cognis auto cannons. Taraxi are one of the many specialized castes of cyborg warriors available to the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are optimized for instinctive reaction and agility. Their reflexes are enhanced by eliminating cognitive elements that impair their primary function. Additional lumbar offshoots, known as scapulae superior, are implanted on their backs, to which a jetpack with reactive engines and sensitive coatings is connected. Thus, the jetpack becomes an integral part of the Taraxi. Taraxi perform several roles on the battlefield. Sterilizers, for example, are honed for aggression, and their legs end in dangerous, spur-like claws. These Taraxi cleanse forge cathedrals, which resemble caves of technocytes and cyberspace infections. However, the tech priests, without hesitation, direct their phosphor torches against sentient enemies as well. Meanwhile, Skystalkers find an optimal position with good visibility from where they shower their estranged targets with a barrage of fire. For thousands of years, the Archaeopter has been the workhorse not only on Mars, but also on distant worlds at the forefront of tech priest expansion. The Archaeopter is a nimble aircraft with rigid wings piloted by a member of the Taraxi cast whose legs and spinal cord are connected to the aircraft's control system. The Archaeopter has wings made of nanocarbon capable of transforming, sharing this feature with the Taraxi jetpacks. Thanks to this, it possesses incredible maneuverability and the ability to move in a variety of atmospheric pressure conditions. The ancient design of the Archaeopter was eventually deemed sacred enough to adapt it for various purposes. Archaeopter transvectors perform reconnaissance tasks and also deliver squads of lethal operatives behind enemy lines or directly into the thick of battle. Fusilaves drop tectomagnetic bombs from their bomb bays that cause seismic shockwaves. Meanwhile, Stratoraptors douse the enemy with fire from all their formidable arsenal. The Adeptus Mechanicus manufactures weapons and military equipment for almost every organization in the Imperium, from the modest infantrymen of Astra Militarum to the machines of the Collegia Titanica and starships of the Imperial Navy. Without the mastery and inventions of the tech priests, the Imperial War Machine would stall and humanity's enemies would reign supreme in the galaxy. The armament of the Skitari is a strange mix of ancient science, modern technology and ornate decoration. Carved wooden rifle stocks, bolt holes, humming dynamo engines and elegant brass triggers blend seamlessly with radiators, radioactive ammunition, lightning rods and glowing fuel cells. They represent both the past and the present combined, terrifying in the destruction they cause and beautiful in their outdated design. This anachronistic combination is not driven by the availability of materials, a desire for aesthetically pleasing weaponry, nor practicality, far from it. Trees have not grown on Mars and have been absent for thousands of years. 
Technological progress has rendered bolt-action rifles obsolete, and the dynamo engines powering many Skitari weapon types have been replaced by more traditional power sources. This practice of utilizing seemingly outdated weapons seems somewhat strange, until one recalls that the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus revere ancient technology. To them, combat equipment and weapons developed during the Dark Age of Technology represented the pinnacle of their design, and everything since then has been merely a poor substitute. But this ancient weaponry is not just superior. It is far more exceptional, inspired by the machine god himself, and considered a sacred tool. At least that's what the tech priests believe. Many Skitarii weapon variants are so lethal to their wielder that they are deemed unsuitable for the rest of the Imperium. Among the most horrifying is the radium carbine. Each bullet it fires is saturated with lethal radiation. Equipping an Imperial Guardsman with this carbine would result only in immediate radiation poisoning and a terrible, albeit blessedly swift, death. Among the most terrifying substances of ancient Mars was phosphex, the production method of which has been lost for thousands of years. This highly corrosive toxin burns with a strong flame that can be extinguished only by placing it in a vacuum. Phosphor weaponry, which the Skitari are armed with, is all that remains of these lost knowledges, a sanctioned substitute for one of the machine god's creations. Perhaps it is no longer capable of turning worlds to ash, but it still covers the enemy in luminous particles, making them an easy target for other Skitari. The Skitari Legion of Mars is the most famous among its kind. Its warriors consider it a great honor to wear the ancient symbols of the Red Planet and fiercely defend all that it concerns, despite the unquestionable supremacy of this forge world. And perhaps because of the proclivity of its masters to lay claim to everything, the red-silver-black military cohorts of Mars are a common sight in every segmentum of the Imperium. The sacred emblem of Mars, in the shape of a cogwheel and skull, adorns many Skitarie warriors and machines, reminding all that they are part of the larger military machine of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Skitari vanguards, as well as rangers, wear battle cloaks marked with the emblem of their forge world. For ease of identification, Skitarii infantry commonly have their squadron number painted on the hem of their cloak. Special units such as the Sicarian rust stalkers and infiltrators may bear a number on their helmets or breastplates. Alphas and princeps of the Skitari legion often wear a skull image instead of their Forge World's emblem. Additionally, they are permitted to place the sign of their manipula either near the section number on the cloak or on the helmet or breastplate. The armor on Skitari machines is painted in the same colors worn by the Sicarians of the Legion. Often next to the number and manipula sign on the machines, plates with a danger sign are installed. Emblems on the sides of the Onager dune crawler are frequently supplemented with victory marks in the form of gear teeth, denoting the number of kills and squadron chevrons. The Skitari cohorts of Lucius wear the Forge World Badge of Lucius. The glowing letter forming the Lucius Badge is scorched onto the planet's surface, every detail visible from a dozen Earth miles high. The battle plate of Lucius cohorts has a dark, almost black hue. Like the machine's armor, these plates are made from a rare alloy, sacredly scorched by an artificial sun inside the planet during a ritual known as the Solar Blessing. During the Inculcata Schism, the Skitari Legion of Lucius uses the same identification system as Mars. They even adopted the dark red color of the first Forge world, although overlaid with beige and dark metal hues, the original symbolics of the planet. The symbol of Agrippina is a sacred cog with an enclosed alchemical symbol. Some tech priests believe it represents the Cadian Gate. An oval inside depicts the eye, shackled by order itself. Agrippina cohorts often fight on the war-blackened hellish lands of the Eye of Terror, where their dark livery often becomes the line that separates life from death. For Agrippina soldiers, the sacred red and black colors of Mars are reversed. And in the Brotherhood of Mars, some say that the concepts of truth and logic at Agrippina are also inverted. Sicarian princeps, as well as Alpha Skitarii, wear battle cloaks of black, the color of their forge world. Their equipment and armor are framed with ancient gold, taken from that layer of Agrippina's surface where war has not yet reached. 
The bright white emblem of Stygis Eight stands out on the dark cloaks of their warriors. It symbolizes not only enlightenment, but also the acquisition of knowledge at any, even the most prohibitive price. In the past, priests of Stygis Eight were accused of heresy. To show that their faith in the Omnisia is pure, the symbolism of Stygis includes the colors of Mars, although arranged differently. The bulk of the Stygis Eight Skitari wear long black cloaks, scarlet armor, and polished steel cybernetics. If such a warrior were to wrap his cloak around himself, he could easily be mistaken for one of his Martian colleagues, a fact Stygis have used more than once. Officers of Stygis Eight fight on the front line in the name of enlightenment. If their red-silver-black symbolism is spotted near an excavation site or quarantine zone, it means the treasures inside will be captured at all costs in the name of Stygis. Warriors of Gryar wear an emblem in the form of a solar wheel. The rising sun at the center signifies the dawn of a new era, while the gear surrounding it indicates that the tech priests of Gryar intend to lead this era. The Skitari of Gryar emphasize the dark crimson color of Mars, with the bright red of spilled blood. Those who speak against Gryar believe it's due to an unhealthy obsession of the Greyan warriors, with every stream of blood flowing from their victims. In fully enclosed battle suits and with electrically magnetized cybernetics, the Skitari of Gryar fought on the silvery outer hulls of their master's space megacities. Although the legions of Metallica fiercely reject the greedy encroachments of Mars, the emblem of a hammer and fist of Metallica is depicted in dark red in honor of the Martian ancestors of the Forge world. The military machinery of Metallica's cohorts is painted in the color typical for this Forge world's insignia, that of bleached bone, which however soon becomes marked with scorch and ruin. The symbolism of the Skitarii of Metallica is usually dictated by their role on the battlefield. The vanguard of Skitari and Rangers wear metallic armor and white cloaks with red lining. The Sicarians usually wear white armor, generally eschewing the color red. All Skitari of Metallica wear grey metallic prostheses and cybernetic enhancements made of the same material that covers the surface of this forge world. Alphas and Princeps are clad in metal mined from the peaks of the The Radiant R of Riza is worn with pride by its warriors. The emblem includes a skull and the gear of Mars, a nod to Riza's ancient origin. Riza's Skitari Legion has a proud history and reputation of unwavering faith. Like on many other Forge worlds, Reza's Skitari often wear purity seals of bloody wax and parchment to show their freedom from the decayed scrap code. The ochre armor and cloaks of Reza's Skitari are of the same shade as the endless desert dunes that thickly cover the planet. The inner surface of the cloaks is dark red in memory of the blood spilled on Reza over thousands of years.